makes me feel very um, a businessman. <laughs> um, evening, everyone. It's uh, a huge honour to stand in front of you all here today, and I just want to kick off by giving a shout out to uh, Damien and Judy. Clearly, they're going to take this um, plant-based movement from niche to mainstream, and uh, yeah, it's 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 brilliant to have the opportunity to talk to you all about what environmentalism means to us at Bowl. But I want a bit of audience participation to kick things off. So, can everybody? Uh, who tried bowl before they arrived this evening, please stand up. Yay, that's like, <laughs> that's brilliant. Please stay standing. Um, can everybody else that's uh, sitting down, please stand up if you've ever tried an innocent drinks product? Okay, I thought that might happen. Thanks very much, everyone else, you can all sit down now. It will become relevant why I've just done that. Um, but we are a food startup and um, we're just coming up to three years old. A lot has happened over those three years and environmentalism and our purpose and responsibility strategy has driven a lot of what we do. Um, before I get to that, I just wanna talk through uh, a little bit of uh, my backstory, and we'll get on to the stuff you've really come here to listen to. Um, so that's what we're going to go through, which I've just said. My story is a Manchester lad started um, trying to play for Manchester United. <laughs> pre pretty much everybody in Manchester. It's not true, everyone's a City fan from Manchester, that's a lie. Um, <laughs> I tried football, failed. I then tried rugby. I, I failed that, I guess, other than just putting up sporting pictures. is a big relevant part to my early life uh, of trying and failing to play sport. For me, I was brought up meat and two veg, drink as much milk as possible. That'll make you into a big, strong boy. Um, my mum didn't know it was bullshit, um, <laughs> but, but we do know now, so uh, it's definitely gonna be a bit different for my kids. Um, I, I, I did actually make it as a professional snowboard instructor, and this isn't just me dropping in my <laughs> sporting achievements, although maybe it is a bit. Um, I, I lasted one week, so I was a professional snowboard instructor for one week, and then I went over a jump. Uh, I was working in Mammoth Mountain, California. It was a really big jump for someone of my ability. I broke. Uh, every bone in my wrist, I dislocated my elbow, I hit my head, I was um, in and out of hospital for a year, I had a cast on to my shoulder for nine months, um, and it was, it was during this time I was, I was recuperating in Los Angeles and managed to convince my mum that recuperating in Los Angeles would be better than going home to <laughs> rainy Manchester. Um, <laughs> Financially, it made more sense as well because uh, travel insurance was, was paying for everything. But I was, I was 21 years old, so it was 18 years ago, and obviously I had a lot of time on my hands. It was a bit of a sliding doors moment for me, and it became quite obvious to me that sport needed to just be a hobby and not try and do it and get paid for it because I obviously wasn't very good at it. Uh, and I just saw the way people in California were living their lives, and the way people were um, eating and drinking and uh, eating salads was totally normal, drinking loads of smoothies was totally normal, and I was like, wow, there's, there's, there's something that I'm quite excited about here. I wanna come back to the UK and start my own food business. So I wrote my first business plan. It was to do a healthy Californian Mexican styled fast food business. I still think it'd be amazing. Um, I'll sell anyone the business plan if anyone's up for it. Um, <laughs> Anyway, I came back, I tried to raise money, it didn't happen. Who was gonna give me money at a 21 year old? Didn't really have a clue what I'm doing. I'm 18 years later, just getting to grasp with things. Uh, I, I came across this company. Um, Innocent had just launched. Um, Innocent uh, immediately just, just got me in the heart. I was like, wow, the, 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 the some, there's something pretty special inside this bottle. I don't know how familiar you are all with it, but 
Uh, I know there's an ex-innocent person in the audience. We've just seen each other after five years. Uh, but uh, 0208 600 3939 is the banana phone. It said, give us a call if you want to chat. Uh, go and visit, come visit us at Fruit Towers. So I did that. My claim to fame with Innocent is I was the first person Rich, Adam and John ever employed who wasn't kind of a friend of a friend. So I turned up and I said, gave all the crap I've just told you about and said, I think, I think smoothies are going to be huge. I kind of don't know what I'm going to do, um, but I think they could be really big outside of London. Can I have the opportunity to, to, to sell them for you? Uh, I didn't really know where it was going to go. I thought I was probably going to work for them for a couple of years and then do my own thing. Um, anyway, I managed to get the job. So um, they gave me a vehicle. This, <laughs> this, is, this, this is our grassy van. So all of this back bit here is um, a fridge. So quite literally filled it up full of the smoothies that were only in London at the time, drove around Manchester, Liverpool, Leeds, Newcastle, up everywhere, getting laughed at lots of places, not because of the van. I, I actually got promoted into a cow van. Um, <laughs> this had an, uh, uh, udders and uh, a tail at the back, and when you hit the horn, it mooed, no lie. <laughs> um, but there was a lot of people in the North of England saying, take your posh, fruit drinks back to London because it'll, it'll never take off, it'll never work. Um, I learned so much at Innocent. Um, they were natural, healthy products. Uh, so proud of the Innocent Foundation. I left three years ago and we, we, we donated over 10 million pounds to charity. Um, the, the company is now owned by Coca-Cola, as I'm sure most of you will know. Uh, I was looking after a part of the food business um, the veg pot food business that we launched in 2008. And when Coca-Cola, the world's biggest drinks brand, took over the business, I knew the writing was on the wall for me and um, it was gonna be time for, for me to exit. So with, with the blessing of Innocent, I was able to take uh, the best bits of that food business and, and carry on with my passion and, and start my own food business. And that was three years ago, did it with a few mates, some chefs, nutritionists, um, and, um, and, and Bowl, Bowl was born. Um, initially, we set, we set um, the, the, the business up because I'm frustrated that when I don't have time to cook from scratch, uh, I have to make compromises. Taste, health, quality, price, we all know the feeling. And, and quite simply, set the business up to make it easy for busy people to eat well. Uh, that's as, that's as deep as it went, I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, and uh, we kind of did okay, um, took a lot of learnings, managed to get a, a little team together. Um, we launched uh, lots of new products. Uh, the, this product we launched here, the Salad Jars, won product of the year. Randomly were invited to the National uh, Business Awards where there was like prime minister there and big cheeses like that. And we won the new business of the year award. Um, got quite a few fans. Uh, most proudly, we donated 100% of our first year profits to charity. Um, and if there's one thing to take away from this talk, uh, Action Against Hunger are an unbelievable charity. And if you don't know much about them, please check them out. Um, so got the stats through yesterday. We've invested in a project in Rajasthan, India. It's all about solving acute malnutrition, child malnutrition and um, We've helped uh, over 3,700 people, um, which is a very small amount compared to the 1.2 billion people that are struggling. So there's a long, long way to go. Um, but we, we set the business up thinking we wanted to do business in the right way. Um, but, um, not but, moving on to the team slide, that's a bit embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> and this is a great team. Uh, so there's 11 of us uh, in the team. Um, uh, this is this is us on Bola Day. You see what we did there? <laughs> we went surfing in San Sebastian. Um, great place if you have, if you've never been. This is Sophia's dog Baloo, who's a big fan. <laughs> Bernie's mountain dog, trying to get her into the studio. So th things were good. And, and on a serious note, these these guys are amazing. And I'm up here today talking about our story. Um, most most of these people, unlike me didn't drop out of university. They, they were working at big companies like Procter & Gamble, Unilever, uh, and have chosen to take the plunge and, and join a startup. And it's, it's, it's pretty hectic, let me tell you. Um, but 
we're, we're, we're pleased about uh, how things are going. As I say, uh, quite a few accolades were coming our way. And so by the end of 2016, things were, things were looking really, really positive. Um, but I, I, I stand here before you now and, and completely uh, transparent with you and will answer any questions anyone's got at any, t any stage, just put your hand up. But 52% of our business uh, at the end of 2016 had recipes that contained meat or fish. Um, and I, I had what I call now my cowspiracy epiphany. Uh, I read uh, a number of books, this one being my favorite by John Robbins and just had that moment, which I'm sure lots of you have had here. I was like, I, I cannot believe, um, I feel like I'm relatively educated and I'm involved in um, food and drink and yet, um, animal agriculture has a more de detrimental impact to the environment than um, all global transportation. And there was just stat after stat after stat and pretty much overnight got around with the team and said, um, that's it, <laughs> meat and fish it is out. Um, and we did a little video a couple of months ago with uh, Bosch, so that's the, the vegan Facebook uh, page, massive fans of Henry and Ian, um, so this is just a two minute video. It's definitely not as cool as the Greenpeace video. How amazing were they, by the way? Yeah. Following Greenpeace, wow. <laughs> Pin pinch yourself moment, but uh, this is our little video about our, our story and the, and the massive paradigm shift, which has been used before, but it's a great expression. dairy we will be 100% plant-based I have my cowspiracy epiphany it's one of the most amazing moments of my life I learned some pretty scary stuff about the food choices we face what we eat is the single biggest environmental decision 660 gallons of water is used to create one hamburger. That's the same as what we use to shower for two months. Animal agriculture creates more global emissions than total transportation. The decision to drop me and fish halved our sales overnight. It was scary. From personal perspective, a huge moral dilemma. I knew it was the right thing to do, but going out of business was absolutely not what I wanted to happen. so much more grounded in ethical values and principles that we believe in. Come the beginning of summer 2018, bottle our ditching dairy. We will be 100% plant-based. Thank you. So um, what does environmentalism mean to Bol? Um, I think the United Nations have, have said it best. They, they have said the single biggest thing uh, an individual can do to help reverse the impact of climate change is to adopt more principles of a, of a plant-based diet. And uh, as, a, as, a, as a food entrepreneur, um, very much, very much use that as a as a guiding principle. What I thought might just be interesting for people is just to take you into a little bit more detail about what I think about and what we think about as a team and all the different areas that we we consider when when trying to to do the right thing. Um, so uh, we 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 kind of structure our responsibility strategy into two areas that the people. And, and the planet, and that is what environmentalism is to us. So on a, from a people perspective, um, it deeply saddens me, as I just mentioned, that there's, there's 1.2 billion people uh, globally who are, who are suffering 
um, from malnutrition for, through uh, a lack of food. Um, coincidentally, there is also the same number of people that are suffering from um, illnesses as a consequence of overfeeding. It's, it's definitely not mother nature's problem, not providing us with the amount of resources that we require. It's just we're not using them very wisely. Uh, if the US uh, reduced their meat intake by 10%, the amount of grains used to feed the livestock would be enough to completely solve the global uh, hunger epidemic. Uh, it is within our grasp. We, we, we have a solution. Uh, from, a, from a planet perspective, um, there's not a huge amount more new stuff that I can add to, to the amazing um, Green Priest presentation that went just before me, but the fact that half the Earth's landmass is being used uh, to, to, to raise livestock, uh, there's 7 billion of, of us on the planet, there's going to be 9 billion in a few, we few years, the, the maths don't add up, and as always, it's going to be the people most deprived that are going to suffer the most if we don't uh, turn this around. Um, we're, 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 we're a little food business, we're definitely not going to solve everything, but um, we're, we're trying to do things in the right way. So um, from farm to fork, brilliant expression, we, we definitely didn't make that up, lots of other smart people did. Um, but the, these, are the, these are the areas where um, uh, w we use energy and are always tr trying to, to improve. So the growers here, our production, transport, the products, the packaging, and then on, on the education side. So I just thought I'd just talk you through a few things that uh, we're doing. Obviously, the drop, dropping meat, fish, and dairy is pretty huge. Um, the dairy alone is going to save 7 million litres of water. Um, we love ugly veg at Bowl. <laughs> uh, I'm sure most of you people do as well. Um, uh, we love it that much. We bought tons of carrots and peppers that uh, wouldn't sell in supermarkets and, and we put them in our products. And so we're definitely up for lots of ugly veg in our products. 100% um, of our um, uh, surplus food is donated to um, Felix Kitchen, um, Felix Project, um, soup kitchens. Uh, definitely don't don't let stuff go to waste. Zero waste to landfill is where we aim for, and it was obviously a brilliant presentation that kicked things off on that. Um, we're actually moving our production closer to where ingredients are grown in, in the UK. Um, from a transportation perspective, um, we're actually tiny in the scheme of things, so um, we actually partner up with other smaller businesses uh, to, to consolidate distribution and reduce down our uh, carbon footprint. Uh, none of our ingredients are air freighted. Uh, so, so again, that has an impact. Um, onto, onto the product itself, um, there's definitely a bit of an in, into out uh, uh, strategy I'm feeling has been going on the last few years. Um, we've definitely got our house in order what's inside the product. Um, there is a lot we can do to improve our packaging position. So we are, um, we're definitely reducing. So we've re lightweighted our packaging and um, that again, that 6.1 tonnage of saving. Um, we are uh, always, always trying to advocate people upcycling and reusing. So um, for us, the, the packaging we put our products in is, is, is modern day Tupperware. So whether you use it to take your um, leftovers to, to work the next day or uh, grow plants in it or use it for the kids' toys and then recycling everything, uh, all of our packaging is 100% recyclable. Um, for us though, um, there's, there's more we can do and um, we are gonna be pioneering a scheme at the end of this year uh, to do a returnable scheme. So when people, and we've been told by lots of people, that's a nice one, Paul, but I've like got 20 of your pots and jars in my house, <laughs> how do I keep reusing it? And I don't wanna recycle it. Um, so we will be kind of ASOS style sending sending packs out and people can send them to us and we, and we will reuse them. We're looking at other materials, whether it be cardboard, aluminium. Um, it's, it's definitely not as simple as, as you would think because one of the things we're so proud about on our products is we don't have any preservatives, we don't use uh, any colorings, there's, there's, there's no nasties whatsoever. And 
uh, everything we make today goes goes off in a week's time and off in a week's time. And if I solve one problem, for example, of putting all of my product into cardboard, uh, then I lose 25, 30% shelf life overnight. And then I just push the problem into a different ecosystem because food waste is a massive problem as well. A third of all food we produce is wasted. And so I'm totally on the bandwagon of Sir David Attenborough, plastic, uh, single use plastic, unnecessary use. Yeah, let's let's go after it and let and let and let's kill it. And um, from from my perspective, and what we're doing, I, th I think uh, I want to find a solution that is 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 fit for, for long term purpose, not that just keeps a few newspaper headlines happy. Um, and if there's people in the room that have strong views on that or have ideas for us, please grab and me or any of the team afterwards because it is a, it's big on our radar. Um, and then finally, um, education. So um, just trying to inspire people to, to eat more plants. That's, as I said in the video, it's the single biggest environmental decision we face every single day. And definitely don't ever buy a bowl if you cook from scratch all the time and you've, you've got everything organized, that's cool. But there's a lot of people out there that aren't that organized and uh, they're running onto a, a train or a plane and we're in those shops um, where you don't then have to uh, compromise on your values and you can eat delicious, fresh uh, food. And that's, that's the kind of, that's the five areas um, that, that we're big on. Um, so we kind of give ourselves a little scorecard at the end of each year. So this is our environmental one. So at the end of the year, eat more plants. So we're targeting to make 10 million portions a veg in 2018, um, there's still two thirds of the population not getting enough fruit and veg into their diet. So help, help pushing that. Um, this funky guy at the top is Tom Hunt. He's an eco chef, um, check him out. He's got a root to fruit philosophy of eating in season. We're doing a partnership with him to create some new recipes. As I mentioned, we're doing the returnable scheme as well. And then finally, and most importantly, Action Against Hunger, they're amazing. We're going to carry on working with them and do what we can to help solve acute child malnutrition. So that's it from me. Um, thank you very much for listening. Um, yeah, power to the plants, power to the people. Thank you.